Hello and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. And uh, listen, we have a voicemail from uh, Glenn House from Old Man Grognard. Apparently, uh, Glenn and I were a little bit in sync yesterday when it came to um, topics. I was talking about artifacts. He's <clears throat> got an episode up where he talks about magic items and artifacts as a MacGuffin or something that the players or everybody in the, uh, well, I should say the play, the, the, the makers and the players, those that not just players as in your owners of the PCs, but the movers and shakers in your world might be looking to get. So let's hear from Glenn. And then, uh, I feel, I, I, he calls it a rebuttal. It's going to be a rebuttal, but in any case. Hi, Eric. Old man Grognard here. Oh, you are hilarious. You are hilarious because I'm listening to 478. And you've got to hear my show number 421, which is tomorrow's all about using the Encyclopedia of Magic to build adventures around magic items and artifacts. I did one for a magic item and one for an artifact. I went through the, the end and the appendix in the back of the fourth book. And we played around with that. So go listen to that. I anticipate your rebuttal, either on your leave a message here. That'd be novelty, novel, wouldn't it? So, yeah, guy. <laughs> okay, we'll just go with that then. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Glenn, there's a few minds I'd like to pick as much as yours. So uh, I'm glad that we were kind of circling around the same thing. I like the idea of a magic item being a MacGuffin. And here, I'm going to uh, balance something out. And I and, and Glenn, I did not get a chance to listen to your episode because I'm doing this late at night and I need to sneak it in before the midnight hour. But I do suggest that everybody go listen to Glenn's podcast. It's a good one in general. But uh, here's the idea. From my point of view is that artifacts and relics, by their very nature, are potentially campaign destructive. It's the power level that's involved. Once once you put it out there, it's hard to take it back. Now, did I take one back in the late 80s by, uh, or eh, mid to late 80s, when my, my, my group was going to the... Uh, tomb of horrors and somebody listen everybody in my fucking party had an artifact and tomb of horrors removed a few when they stuck their head into the uh, sphere of annihilation oh, uh, a certain crown was removed instead of somebody's head yes and and, they, and again they, uh, the temptation to abuse artifacts are certainly uh, probably there for, uh, I don't think this is the wrong way, folks, for the more immature gamers, younger gamers. I was a younger gamer at that point. But nothing, nothing has the potential to derail a campaign as much as an artifact. That, you know, and that's some of the comments I saw on social media to yesterday's podcast from people who didn't listen to the episode but just saw I was talking about artifacts. Who talks about artifacts? Who uses artifacts in their campaigns? Why would it even be an issue? So apparently people at least speaking up don't use them. That's My thought is an artifact if it's going to be in your campaign should be something that your players will never attain. Okay, and if they do, that should be the uh, the pentult what pent ultimate or ultimate uh, piece of your campaign, and that should be a wrap it up. But, hey, they got they got the one ring or whatever it is, and now the campaign can wrap up. However, unique magic items, which can be powerful but aren't on the level of being an artifact. Yes. They can be a great MacGuffin. All right. I'm going to admit that I, I listened to like 
like a minute or two of going to the podcast. Didn't get a chance to listen to it all, Glenn. But yes, a MacGuffin certainly can be, you know, a uh, unique magic item. Certainly. I like that idea. But uh, artifacts? No, I, 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 I still don't like that idea. Sorry. So, now that we've uh, caught up on Glenn's, what do we have elsewise? Not much, man. Although, I have to say, and this might be an episode unto itself, I'm, I'm going to send you all to a website I rarely send you to. Okay? But, uh, Michael Tresca, I'm hoping I'm getting that name right, has an article on N-World talking about Dave Arnson, Gary Gygax, and the current brouhaha that's uh, popping up. And the article is fine. Uh, I find that Mike usually has good articles, uh, readable articles, which a lot of times in N-World I don't find them readable. But the comment section, you got to read the comments. Because... People that have been in this hobby or follow this hobby, there's nothing new coming out in the documentary, which I still have to finish watching. Oh, my God. I got I got voicemails on that just for my first 40 minutes. But my take on it, and this is going to be just my take. It doesn't have to be yours. My take on Dungeons and Dragons and a legacy of Gary Gygax and Dave Arnson is pretty much as follows. Without Dave's idea of how to make like a role playing game, not the rules of it, but the way one would actually role play characters in a game. Yes, we kind of hold that to Dave. Putting it into a format that can be replicated, that you can purchase in a box set and with a little hard work and get a game that you can run out of that box, especially by the time Basic came around. That was Gary. That was Gary's vision. Okay. Uh, my understanding, and I think I said this before, is Dave was not someone that. Or guys, he was like he was probably like an improv DM, okay. And he was an improv DM, not just in the in the adventures he ran, but in the rules that he used. Whereas Gary was able to take basically wargaming rules and paste them into that idea of RPGs and present something that the masses could run with. Could you have one without the other? Probably not. Would Gary been able to put something out without Dave's input? I'm sure we would have gotten further war games that had further fantasy elements that seemed to have been something that, was, something that was striking Gary's fancy at the time. But I don't know if we would have gotten what became Dungeons and Dragons, at least not at that time. They were both instrumental. But one had, I guess, I guess you could say. One had the vision of what RPGs were or could be, and one had the vision on how to bring this to the mass market. So without Gary, you would not have this hobby as it grew. Uh, without Dave, you wouldn't have had Dungeons and Dragons as we know it. So six and one and a half dozen of the other, they are both important. Okay, and, and like I said, you remove one from the equation, you're not going to have what we have now. I'm not going to go, this one is 51% of what D&D is, and this one's 49 because I'm only talking about that original white box. That presenting is certainly Gary's, but the... The spark that brought that to into being, that's Dave. All right. On that note, folks, as always, be safe, be well, God bless. Roll those dice, and I will talk with you all tomorrow.